Hello friends, this week we are doing five star predictions. This is part three of a series. So if you haven't seen my five star audit or my first iteration of this series, I will link those in the description. Basically what happened is I looked at all the books I've ever given five stars to and created a list, here it is, of all of the things that I typically give five stars to, tropes or themes in books that I tend to love. And then I picked three books that I thought had those themes that I might enjoy and I read them, two of them were five stars. And now it's your turn. I've taken your comments on that video and on other videos of things that you think that I would love that fit into these categories. And I've compiled a list. The first thing is something that not just one, not just two, but many, many people have been shouting in the comments that I should read. And that is The House Witch. I'm gonna leave one or two of the comments here so you can see what other people have had to say about this. This fits into the category of cozy fantasy. We are following Finn, who is a house witch, and he is being employed as the royal cook to the king of Daxaria. We are following him as he steps into this new job. He arrives and gets to know the court and all the goings on. There's a little romance in here. There's a cat familiar named Kraken. We get some chapters from Kraken's perspective. The last page of the description says, filled with fascinating characters, courtly intrigue, political machinations, delicious cuisines, cuddly companions, magical hijinks, and will they won't they romance, The House Witch is the first in a captivating new series guaranteed to satisfy the tastes of any reader. I think the cover of this is stunning. I think the plot synopsis is stunning. You guys have been shouting about it. I hope I love it. Next up, we have Deathless. This is a retelling of the Slavic folktale of Koshe the Deathless. Our main character here is Maria Marevna. We are following her as she grows up and gets married to to Koshe the Deathless and gets whisked off to this magical realm where high drinks ensue. This is the comment that recommended this book to me. I am so excited to pick this up because obviously from the five star audit, I love a demon, devil, heaven, hell sort of a situation. And Koshe the Deathless as a character really feels like it's gonna be exactly what I want because Koshe is the czar of life, but is commonly depicted as a menacing evil figure who is the villain of many tales. And I think that what Kat Valente is gonna do in here is gonna be a little bit of a twist on that situation and try to make Koshe out to not be quite the evil figure that we know from folklore. This also takes place somewhat in Russia during the 20s through the 40s. So we are seeing Soviet Russia, we are seeing wars happen, we are seeing the blockade of Leningrad, we are seeing a lot of atrocities happen in the real world and then also in the magical world. Bonus points, the back of this says this is for fans of Neil Gaiman and I am a fan of Neil Gaiman, so. Super high hopes for this one. And finally, we are reading Lexicon because it has to do with language. I'm worried about this one. I'm worried about this one. I have never heard anyone talk about this. I at least am aware of Kat Valente as an author. I don't know who this author is. I've never heard anyone recommend this book besides this comment and I am taking your word for it. Apparently there's this like poet society and they use language to persuade people in a way that like they'll say words and those words can kill you. We're gonna find out together. Those are the three things that I am reading. We're starting with The House Witch and I will see you when I have started it. I have a confession to make. I don't like this and I am so sorry about it. I am over halfway through it now and I have been waiting to update you because obviously this is a five-star predictions video and I want to love everything that I'm reading and I extra want to love this because one of you lovely people sent it to me. Shay, thank you so much for sending this to me. I so appreciate it. And some of you guys have been camped out in the comments telling me that I am absolutely going to love this book. And I had such high hopes. I was so sure it was gonna be five stars, which is why it's in this video. But I think at this point, like it's gonna get, it's gonna get two stars. And I'm so bummed about it. I've been doing every single thing in my power to not get on here and tell you that I don't like this, but I think that's just what has to happen. It is reminding me a lot of this book and the way that the writing style I think is similar. So I think if you liked this, you could really like this and vice versa. But for me, the writing is just, it's just not it. I don't, I'm not liking it. I was so excited because there's a cat in here named Kraken and we got a chapter from the cat's perspective and I'm reading another one from the cat's perspective right now and I just don't like it. 
I don't like it at all. The conversations that we're having, it's inclusive, but in a really surface level way that is just kind of putting me off. Like there's this group of knights who is being pretty awful to this woman who works in the kitchen and they're like physically chasing her and she is feeling unsafe. And just the way that their like character arc goes is just, I don't know, it just feels really cheesy and really surface level. And it really just feels like the dialogue is just not where it needs to be. It feels like an after school special and it does not feel like I am in the story and I'm sorry and I don't want to really talk about it anymore because I'm just not enjoying it. I'm going to finish the book, but I don't like it. I don't like the relationship that's in here. I don't like the side characters. I don't like being in the cat's perspective. I don't like the audiobook. I picked up the audiobook. I don't like it. I'm going to go finish this book and I promise I will attempt to come back with a more concrete example, textual evidence of what I'm not liking about this so you can determine whether or not you would like it because obviously people like this, right? I have subscribers of mine in the comments telling me that they adore this series. I promise to come back with more textual evidence of what I don't like so you can determine if that bothers you or not. So you can determine if you would like this. I'm gonna go finish this. I'm so sorry I don't like it. I have finished The House Witch. I'm landing on, I think I'm landing on a 2.75. Don't know if I can quite give it a three, but it did redeem itself. Like by the end, I was invested in the relationship in here. I did really enjoy our House Witch has this friendship with the young prince. I think he's like six or seven and he is so sweet. And I really did like their relationship and the way that Finn was kind of parenting him in like a more inclusive way because the king and all the like noble people and royal people are quite classist. And Finn is, I felt like those conversations were done very well. The way that Finn was like trying to explain things between like mages and witches and, and these almost like race-like conversations that they were having, it was, well done. I think I'm I think I'm talking myself into a three, but we'll see what happens. Because I'm about to redo one of the passages that I like I almost DNF'd after I read this passage because it's just not my type of humor. This is a humorous book and it's not my type of humor. And I think that often happens if you read something that's supposed to be funny and you don't find it funny, you're losing a lot of the value in it. Um, so if this is your type of humor, you're gonna love this book. If this is not your type of humor, you're not going to love this book. There's a character in here named Lord Fux, spelled F-U-K-S. And I'm gonna try not to get demonetized while talking about this. He names his child Les, L-E-S. So his full name is Les. His father's name is Gaylord. The whole time that Finn is finding out this information, like he's trying not to burst out laughing. And then he eventually does laugh at this man's name. And the man has this moment where he's like, hey, now that you've laughed at me because of my name, I have power over you. And that is why I name my children. Our whole line names our children these ridiculous names because we know our last name is ridiculous. And we're naming our children these names that are like middle school humor because now you owe us something. And this should teach you a lesson that, I don't know, I grew up with this ridiculous name. So I will always be stronger than you. That was kind of like the point of that passage. And I didn't find it funny, but the book very obviously meant for it to be funny. So that's, that's what I'm saying about this. This unfortunately was not five stars. So the video has failed. I'm so sorry. That's The House Witch. Let's move on to the next book we're reading, which is Deathless by Kat Valenti. I meant to update you so much earlier, but I'm already halfway through Deathless and I am absolutely loving it. I started reading this on a walk. I've been listening to the audiobook and after a 15 minute walk, our walks have been a lot shorter because all the roads around my house are closed right now because they're like trimming tree branches by the power lines. Anyways, if I have an audiobook, I love for that to be the way that I start a book because it really helps me to just get like fully immersed in the story. I don't get distracted. I'm just sitting there listening, taking it all in. And uh, yeah, after that 15 minute walk of reading that book, I had to order it because I knew that I was going to love it. I absolutely love a retelling and this is so, so, so good. So thank you so much to the person who recommended that I read this. This is what they had to say about it. And I have to agree, yes, this book is exactly the type of unhinged characters that I love. It's exactly the type of like demon story that I love because it is so steeped in folklore. There are leshies in here, there are imps in here, there are other magical creatures. And I really, really love learning about each culture's monsters 
and how that folklore is used to tell stories about our world. So in this world that we're in right now, our main character is living through the whole Lenin, Stalin, Bolshevik, and the magical creatures in this magical world that she goes to, they all have opinions about all of this. There are specific rules and people are trying to trick our main character. And the premise of the story is we have this young woman who watches all of her sisters get married off to birds who fall off of a branch and land on the ground and turn into men. And they come and take her sisters away and marry them. And she's been waiting for her bird and finds out that she's been promised to the deathless. Finds this out by talking to the creatures who like live in her house and take care of the house. And it's all like folklore and magic that she's been told as stories, but didn't think was actually true. And now she's been brought to his world. So basically there's these two sides of this war that's going on where we have the deathless and death himself. And the deathless is the one that she is betrothed to. And now she's going through all of these tests that Baba Yaga has set for her. And it's just my absolute favorite type of story where it is saying something about history. There are politics in here. It's also talking about this folklore that I'm not super familiar with, that I'm learning a lot about, that I really love. It has that fae fairy tale quality to it that I just absolutely eat up. We're getting to know all of these different monsters and creatures and the way that the rules that they are governed by are different from the rules that humans are governed by and their sort of like twisted logic. And I'm having an absolutely fantastic time. I'm so, so, so happy that this video forced me to read this book because I have never heard anyone talking about this. I would love to hear in the comments if you guys are familiar with this book, if a lot of you have read it, but I'm hooked. I'm so excited. I kind of want to stop reading the audiobook because I want to experience reading this physically, but I truthfully don't think I can stop myself. I will be reading this every second of every day and we will see if I finish it before the physical book comes in the mail. So next you will either see me telling you that I have finished the book or that the physical book has arrived. We have packages that have arrived. Let's open these together. I'm not sure which one is which, but they're both for this video. So let's get them opened. Deathless is first, fantastic. I'm so excited to have a physical copy of this because I keep wanting to share moments of this with you guys and quotes. And it's kind of tough to do when you're reading something on audiobook. The poor dog is barking outside because he wants me to go play with him. So I'm gonna go do that, but I'm really excited. I'm still enjoying reading this. And then let's just quickly open this. I have zero minutes left in my memory card. So let's see if this even functions for me. Oh, this is wrapped so cutely. I love when people do this. I got both of these from Pango, so they're secondhand. And this is Lexicon, which is the book that we are going to read next. The dog is woofing, so we are gonna go play with him outside. <laughs> just finished reading Deathless and this is 100% five stars. I am so happy that this video forced me to read this book because I have never heard anyone talking about this book before and this probably will be in my top 10 of the year. The things that this book has to say about life and death, marriage and love, the Atrocities of War, chapter 23, is one of the most heartbreaking and poetic descriptions of war that I have ever read. This is absolutely everything that I'm looking for in a book. Absolutely everything. The characters in here are unhinged. The relationship that's in here is incredibly toxic. It's a retelling of this Slavic tale of Koshay the Deathless, and we are getting to understand this story through a different perspective and a different point of view, but it still feels incredibly fairy tale, and it really does feel like you're being told a dark fairy tale as you're like drifting off to sleep. It feels like your grandmother is telling you the uncensored version of the fairy tale as you're going off to sleep and telling you the things that she has witnessed in her long life and the hard things that she's had to go to, through and is comforting you and also desperately trying to impart wisdom upon you. I, I cannot explain to you how incredible this book is. All the choices in here just feel so deliberate. I wanna read you a couple of quotes 
So this chapter 23, the one that I was talking about, it's it's depicting the blockade of Leningrad and it's told from the Domovoya's perspective. The Domovoya is like this kind of like a house elf type situation. She's married to the house and she stays with the house and she's like this little imp type creature. And she's she's telling this story. It's not from Maria Marevna, our main character's perspectives. And she says, the, the chapter starts, look, I'm holding up my two hands and between them is Leningrad. I am holding up my two hands and between them is a black space where Maria Marevna is not speaking. She would like to because she thinks the story is like a treasure and can belong only to one dragon. But I make her share. I will not let her have the whole thing. I have this power. I will not let her speak because I love her and when you love someone, you do not make them tell war stories. A war story is a black space. On the one side is before, on the other side is after and what is inside belongs only to the dead. Later on, she says, for storytelling, a domovoya is always better than a human because she will not try to make a miserable thing less miserable so that a boy sitting at his grandmother's knee can nod and say, the war was very terrible, wasn't it, Babushka? But it is all right because some people lived and went on to be good and have children. I spit on that boy because he thinks only of his own interest, which is that he should be born. Miserable means miserable. What can you do? You live through it or you die. Living is best, but if you can't live, well, life is like that sometimes. So now I stop everything. And I say it is time for the dead to talk with the dead. And Zvornik has the floor, if there is a floor left to have. I'm going to read you one more passage from this chapter specifically, because I think going deep on one chapter that had a big impact on me is going to give you more of an idea of why this book had such an impact on me, rather than me giving you just a general overview of all the things that I loved about this because I think that general overview, while it is useful in deciding if this is the type of subject matter that you want to read, I think what is so impactful is the mastery of language that Kat Valente is showing in this. So I'm going to continue to dive deep because I think that's going to be what's most helpful. And all of us saw General Frost step over the Neva. All of us held our breath and snapped our fingers to keep off his eye. His shoes were straw and rags, his beard was all hard snow. He had no hat, but his skull had chilblains, and his great blue-black hands held the double chain of his dogs December and January. How they bite with those teeth. Old Zvornuk does not make up stories to frighten you. Ask anyone, and you will be told that Russia's greatest military man is General Frost. He whips our enemies with ice and freezes their guns in their paws and sends out his dogs. On the breast of General Frost hang more medals than icicles. Should you ever be so lonely and unlucky to be a soldier in Russia, May some unbusy God preserve and keep you, you may see him. Hold your left hand over your right eye, put a lump of snow in your mouth, and crouch in a trench all night without sleeping, and you may spy him wandering through the drifts, laying his hand on German heads and turning their helmets to death masks. But alas for us, General Frost was blinded in his use, an oily rag he wears over his useless eyes, and the old man is just as happy to gobble up Russian souls as the Hun as anyone else. It makes no difference to his big stomach. He blunders, the old god does, and his dogs get off the leash, yapping away into the dark. No one could get out, nothing could get in. Winter's bitch dogs got hold of the ration cards and shook them until they broke in half and in half again. Nothing that I can tell you is gonna hit home how much of impact that this had other than just reading the language that Kat herself uses. At the end of the day, this had such a greater impact on me than I ever thought that it would. It is right up there with everything that I love in books. And I think perhaps I need to go back and re-audit my five stars after reading this because I do think that a retelling needs to be included in there because I consistently adore reading retellings, especially retellings that I'm not familiar with the original story. The only part of this story that I'm familiar with is Baba Yaga. I've read Baba Yaga retellings before. I loved Thistlefoot. And I think that through reading this and reading other people's reviews of this and kind of diving deeper into this story has really kind of unlocked a love for the original tale that this is based on. I will say I did think that this dragged a little bit in the middle. I was super hooked up until Maria Marevna ended up marrying Koshe. She had these uh, trials and tasks that she had to complete that Baba Yaga set out for her. And then right after her marriage, this war started and we kind of jumped forward in time. And I think that was a little bit jarring to me and it was difficult for me to grasp that war and the significance of that. And then when Yvonne came into the picture and we end up back in Leningrad, I was hooked right back in again once that happened. So just that tiny little piece in the middle 
uh, did drag a little bit for me. So, so I did want to mention that, but I don't think that a book needs to be perfect to be five stars. And I would be an incredibly silly person to not give this five stars. Okay, I'm not sure how we're going to be able to top that, but on to our third and final book. I'm about 35-ish percent into our third and final book, which is Lexicon, and it's going better than I expected it to. I know that's a weird thing to say in a five-star predictions video, but like Deathless, this is the first that I had heard of this book was the comment that was left on my five-star audit that convinced me to pick it up. And I'm really glad that it did because I guarantee that I never would have picked this up if I had like found it in a bookstore because the back, let me read it to you. Sticks and stones break bones, words kill. They recruited Emily Ruff from the streets. They said it was because she's good with words. They'll live to regret it. They said Will Park survived something he shouldn't have, but he doesn't remember. Now they're after him and he doesn't know why. There's a word they say, a word that kills, and they want it back. It sounds like a movie that your dad would watch. It's like a very blow em up boy movie, and it sounds cheesy, and it doesn't sound like something that I would enjoy. And it is, it is that, but it's also scratching the language itch in my brain, which is the reason why this was recommended to me. So I am very happy that I am reading it. We're in multiple timelines. We're getting multiple different perspectives. The audiobook has two different narrators. So we're in Emily's head and we're in Will's head. And we are also occasionally in Elliot's head and in like other people's perspectives. It's not clear at the beginning what the timelines of all this are, but we are in separate times. So we are flashing backwards and forwards and getting to understand different pieces of this puzzle. And I do think that this is very well structured the way that Max Berry has constructed the timeline, the plot of this book is exceptional. It is a page turner. I never want to put this down. I'm always interested in what's going on. We have this school classroom setting, which is a little weird and it's kind of giving one of my favorite books, The Mysterious Benedict Society with like the testing. And it's also kind of giving Vita Nostra, which is one of my favorite dark academias with the way that language is playing into this classroom environment. It also feels like a book that was written by a man in 2013. Uh, I just watched Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the original 2005 movie with Dan last night. And we were just commenting on how 2005 it was with very obviously was giving directed by a man. Here's an example. The amount of times we have talked about people going to the bathroom too many times. In the first 50 pages, so many scenes took place in the bathroom. And I don't really know why we had to hear about this guy going to the bathroom and putting himself back in his pants, which didn't need to be there. We also had to hear about our main character taking off her pants in the bathroom to wash them. We also had to hear about how much she had to pee. It was just too much is focused on the bathroom and I don't understand why. I have never in my life paid attention to how often characters have to pee or go to the bathroom until this book. And that's saying something. Like that should not be something that I remember from this book. So some of the choices are a little bit interesting, but the concept of persuasion and language in here is super, super interesting. And I cannot wait to learn more and share it with you all because it is kind of giving, it's kind of giving John Mars. It's on the very bottom of the stack, so I'm not pulling it out, but The Passengers, The One, it's that brand of science fiction and kind of also a little bit of like, and then I woke up sprinkled in there. It's fast paced, we're switching perspectives, we're in a lot of different people's heads and we're also focused on like this very specific piece of technology. And in this case, it's to do with language and persuasion. And that is super interesting to my brain, which is why I picked it up in the first place. That's why I wanted to read this because that's something that I typically give five stars to. So I'm super excited to figure out where the rest of this goes. I wanted to check in now before I knew too much about how this whole persuasion thing works and where our characters end up because I think we're about to get twisty and turny and I'm excited about it. It is violent. I do just want to point that out. It is a violent book. A lot of people have died already and we are about to go somewhere where I think there's going to be a lot of dead bodies. So keep that in mind. I'm going to go finish this and I'll let y'all know what I thought. I have finished reading Lexicon and I am going to give it five stars. 
which is very exciting. So that means that two out of the three of the books that we read in this video are actually five stars, which is wild because they're both books that you guys recommended that I had never heard of before. And the one that I kind of shoved into this video, even though it didn't super fit, was the one that flopped. Once again, this is not a perfect book. You heard my qualms about the bathroom talk. It continued throughout the entire book. I don't know why we were in the bathroom. I'm talking about the bathroom so much, uh, but we were. The plot was so fast paced. This is the fastest I read any of the three books that I read and it's a good almost 400 pages. I absolutely flew through it. I never wanted to not be reading it. I went to dinner last night and while Dan was in the bathroom, I pulled out this book and I read a couple of pages because I like, I couldn't stop myself. All I wanted to do was read this book. I wouldn't say it's a thriller in the terms that there aren't twists and turns that I didn't see coming. Like I thought the plot was fairly predictable, but it was very action packed and very interesting. Like I wanted to find out what was gonna happen next, even though I kind of, the things that could have been set up as reveals, there were lots of hints given. So it wasn't like you were kind of supposed to be in on it rather than shocked at the reveals that were happening. I thought the plot was structured very well. I think if you like a thriller action packed type situation, you are gonna enjoy this. But the reason why it's five stars is because of the language element. And that's why I wanted to do this whole video because there is something about talking about language that just makes my brain so happy. And I am so thrilled to have confirmed my hypothesis that this is something that I am gonna love in books. And it makes me so excited to pick up more things like this. I thought it stuck the landing really well. You know that I have an issue sometimes when books end in a way that doesn't mesh with the overall story, like a happy ending gets chucked onto a horror book just because. I don't love that. I thought the ending of this was exactly what it needed to be. I had a couple of issues with like the way the female characters were portrayed, the bathroom situation. But other than that, I thought this was an exceptional, exceptional book. I am giving it five stars. I don't know if I would pick up more by this author because the thing that I loved about this was the language element, but I will uh, stay tuned for what Max Berry does next. Which brings us to the end of our video. We started off with The House Witch, which I wanted to love and did not. I'm giving this 2.75 stars. That's my final rating. And two five star books. So happy about both of these. So to recap, the reason why we read these, cozy fantasy, demon, heaven, hell conversations, as well as being unhinged, and books that deal with language. And we had two huge wins and one not so huge win. I would absolutely love to do this again. So please let me know in the comments if you have any more suggestions for books that I should pick up that are any of these. These are, this is my five star audit. I'll also link that video in the description if you haven't seen it. All These are all of the themes that I have and I'm gonna add retellings to this because I think that definitely is something that I adore. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and for making this video happen. This would not have been possible if you lovely people had not commented things that you thought I would love. And you were right, you were right. I did love two out of the three things. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And I will see you next week. I post every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern. So I will see you then. Next week, we're doing a 24 hour readathon. So stay tuned.